with defense down, damage taken up, and critical damage taken up, you will be able to melt any monster. Hello, my name is Storyteller. I remember, so you don't have to. I've been playing Summoner's War Chronicle since it was released in Korea until now, and I'm making various guides and arena videos. Anyway, I heard that the global server will be released on March 9th. So I made a guide for beginners who are just starting the game. First of all, there are many monsters in this game, but what many people are most curious about is which monster is good. So in this video, I will introduce good net 4 monsters in PvE. Of course, net 5 has better performance, but it takes a lot of gold and materials to raise. So when you are newbie, it is recommended to raise around net 3 and net 4, which has good cost effectiveness. And this game has a restore function, so don't worry, you can get back all the materials you used. Anyway, first of all, the net 4 recommended by the fire attributes are Lizardman, Cowgirl, Harpew, and Priest. Fire Lizardman is a good warrior which is useful in Tear Glance Cave. Fire Lizardman's first skill applies poison to prevent the boss from using damage taken down. It also weakens the boss attack power by lowering the critical rate. Second skill has a block beneficial effect and prevents the boss from applying buffs on its own. The buffed tier glance cave boss is really powerful, so this is very useful against the boss. The fire wizard man can be obtained for free in Monster Story. Thank you, Comtus. Next is Fire Cougar. She is a monster that specialized in burning and she can stun in a wide area with first skill. 3.5 seconds is a very long time and can be used continuously if you have enough mana. So it's very useful in Spirals of Ascension. Fire Cougar is also can be obtained for free in Monster Story. Thank you again, Comtus! Next is Fire Harpew. As a night time monster, apply unrecoverable with first skill and if target has unrecoverable, Apply attack down by plat hit and applies attack up and recovery with second skill. It is useful in many situations because it prevents the recovery of enemies, heals allies and gives a buff to increases attack power. Because unrecoverable is very useful in PvP, it is also helpful for newbies PvP. Next is the Fire Priest. She is specialized in invincibility. Her first skill gives invincibility to allies who has low HP while recovering. Skill 2 grants invincibility to allies in a wide range and if invincible, removes all harmful effects. Therefore, if you make her use invincibility without using soul link and change the soul link during the invincibility period, you can use invincibility 3 times for 10 mana. It is no exaggeration to say that it is a must have for newbies to break high level content. Next is Water Attribute. In Water Attribute, Cowgirl, Howl, Hog, and Rich are recommended. However, Cowgirl and Hog are used in the Seal Ruined Temple, so their priority is low. Water Cowgirl is a monster that specialized in Frostbite and can apply Frostbite multiple times through second skill. It can do high damage in Seal Ruined Temple if paired with a Water Raven who have Frostbite Explosion. Water Howl is a healer that consists of recovery for first skill and second skill. First skill increases stability because it heals a single ally while applying a defense up buff. Second skill removes attack down and defense down before awakening, but after awakening, it can remove one harmful effect. However, if you want to improve your specs, I recommend Awakening. Waterhog is a supporter and first skill applies the enemy's move speed down and critical rate down, but it is not that useful. Second skill gives allies critical less up, critical damage taken down, and move speed up. Since increased movement speed is very important in Seal Ruined Temple, Waterhog is a useful monster along with Wind Griffon. However, I think the hog, which lowers the boss critical damage, is a little bit more useful. Rich is very important, 
to clear Forgotten Earth Shrine, one of the Rune Dungeon. Against Rodos, who continues to use Attack Up and Defense Up, Skill 1 applies Attack Down and Defense Down while removing both effects. Skill 2 is a simple buff that increases his attack power, and the passive is a very good passive that reduces the cooldown of Skill 1 while ignoring Rodos' CC. Before Water Reach came out, Rodos was a nightmare-like difficulty, but after Water Leech came out, it changed to Cheesecake-like difficulty, yeah. Next is Wind Attributes. For Wind Attributes, I recommend Penguin Knight, Griffon, and Martial Cat. Penguin Knight's first skill using Taunt and Continuous Recovery, and his second skill removes one dot and applies skill acceleration to allies. Skill acceleration is very useful for all monsters, especially with Orbia, the Dealer Summoner. Wind Penguin Knight often used in Queen Spider Nest because it can taunt baby spiders while removing poison. Next is Wind Gripon. It only used in Seal Wind Temple for move speed up, so you can raise one of the Water Hog or Wind Gripon you want. But like the Water Hog, raise it when challenging the Seal Wind Temple, not before. Next is Wind Martial Cat one of the best dealers among Net4, and it has a passive that increases in proportion to the enemy's harmful effects. Skill 1 applied critical damage taken up, which makes the damage more powerful. And if the target is a boss, attack down is additionally applied. Skill 2 inflicts bleeding, but critical damage taken up is more powerful, so it is not used well unless it is to apply another debuff. Before the nerf, it was a monster comparable to Net5, but after the nerf, it came down to a decent dealer. Unless fight with a fire attribute monster, it's good enough to be used as a main dealer in most situations. In light attribute, Mystic Witch, Howl, and Hog are recommended. I would recommend Vagabond for PvP in newbie, but let's move on since this is an introduction to monsters for PvE. Light Mystic Witch has both wide area skills, so it's good for PvE contents with many enemies. Her first skill applies on Recoverable, and second skill applies on Revivable and ignore Death Denier effects. Also, if the target's HP is below the 30%, the damage is further increased. It is pretty useful in the Laboratory of Madness because it uses on Recoverable and ignores the Death Denier effect and she was also my PvP main monster in the past. Light Howl is the best net for healer, and it is a monster used by your rankers in Korea. Like Water Howl, it has two recovery skills. First skill have recovery given up, so it can increase recovery amount, and second skill recovers while removing all continuous damage, and if HP is full, it gives immunity. Although it does not remove the harmful effect, it prevents subsequent harmful effects through immunity. Immunity is useful in all situations, so if you can get it, you should be able to use it in most situations. Light Hog is a very useful monster for Orbia. Recovers allies HP through normal hits and applies skill acceleration and skill cooldown reduction with first skill. This allows Orbia to fire more skills than usual. The second skill increases attack power and depending on the remaining HP, grants continuous recovery and endurance. Light Hog, which increases attack power, enables continuous shooting of skills, recovers with normal hit, and even applied endurance when in danger. Light Hog is one of the best supporters for Orbia. In the Dark Attribute, Dark Inugami, Dark Cowgirl, and Dark Hog are recommended. Dark Inugami is the best net for debuff proportional dealer. His flat hit can apply the defense down and poison, and his first skill can apply the damage taken up while dealing a damage. His second skill is important, deals extremely high damage with based on number of harmful effects. Like a late, if target has a lot of harmful effects, the damage is like a nuclear boom. Dark Cowgirl is a strong single damage dealer and increases her critical damage through her passive. Her first skill is an attack skill with a push, and second skill is an attack skill that inflicts attack speed up on herself. 
The biggest feature of dark cover is ignore damage mitigation effect. Because it can ignore various effects such as defense of invincibility and shield, it was often used in PvP where invincibility was mainly used in the past, and also Naraka Laid. However, it is not used as often as in the past, as Naraka can be killed with the damage taken up debuff. But if for newbie, I think that Dark Cougar is still good who can easily deal damage. So I put it on the list. It was the mandatory net 4 in the past. The last one is Dark Hog. Dark Hog is a supporter that improves the damage of allies. First skill gives the enemy critical damage taken up, and second skill increases the attack speed, precision, and critical rate of allies. First skill is useful for all dealers, and second skill is well suited for normal attacking dealers such as Fire Laban. With defense down, damage taken up, and critical damage taken up, you will be able to melt any monster. As I said, Net 5 requires a lot of gold and materials to raise. So if you try to start using Net 5 straight away in the beginning, you will fall behind. I'm Korean, so I may have been poor at English, but I made this video with the hope that it would be helpful for beginners. If this video was helpful, please share this video with other beginners. Anyway, take a long look. Goodbye.